Hello everyone, I am Orbit, and today I am going over some more underrated and rarely shot targets for astrophotography. A lot of these targets are underrated or rarely shot because they're dim and need a lot of integration or dark skies or, or just in a, kind of an area where nobody really pays a lot of attention to, you know, they, they might be small, something like that. So I have a list of targets today. Uh, like I did in my last video that are astrophotography targets that are underrated and this is really for all year round and what I mean by that I don't mean it's like circumpolar or anything. The list of these targets are you know spring, fall, uh, winter, summer, whatever. So you can shoot a couple of these targets you know any time of year pretty much there is going to be a target in here that you can shoot uh, which is fantastic. Uh, this is also more so for the northern hemisphere. Although there are some targets in here that you definitely can shoot from the Southern Hemisphere. But the reason I'm gearing this more towards the Northern Hemisphere is because uh, these niche targets, since they're a lot more dim and are kind of a lot more unique and different from other targets, I don't know a lot about the niche targets of the Southern Hemisphere like I do the Northern Hemisphere because I'm a lot more familiar with these targets. So I, I actually feel like I have the right to talk about them and discuss them. Uh, so let's get straight into it. Alright, I'm starting off here with one that is surprisingly not shot that much, saying it's in like the most basic catalog ever, which is the Messier catalog. This is the Starfish Cluster, which is Messier 38. This is in the constellation of Riga, so this is more of a fall target. Uh, but it is absolutely beautiful and has some gorgeous HA you can frame up around here. And this FOV that you're seeing is actually quite a tight FOV, so beware that you can probably actually fit a lot more of this stuff in here and it's just a super cool target with all the ha around it and it has a, a good mixture of blue and orange stars so it's not a very boring cluster either and that ha only makes it pop even more you can see here this is an image i have on it right here i shot this uh probably about two to three weeks ago and i was actually quite happy with the image uh definitely one of my favorites one of my favorite star clusters to shoot uh for the fall sky so this is a target uh, I'm going to have to recommend. The next one here is Lambda Orionis or Barnard 30 is one of the catalog numbers of this. It has many, but this is a super good target to shoot in the winter. It is quite dim, I'd say. Definitely has a lot of dim dust, but the HA can be picked up with an HA filter quite well. This is really good when you shoot it in like a HA RGB combination because you get all the broadband dust and stuff and the HA, which is really nice. I actually have a video on my channel where I shot this target and I actually collabed that data with a friend as well to get this image, which uh, of course we were both happy with. This is definitely a target I'm gonna recommend. You should 100% shoot this during the winter if you can. You probably can shoot this in, uh, you know, HA-ish, uh, dual narrow band, even from higher up bortles, but it's definitely gonna be better the, the lower your Bortle is, so you can get all those broadband features too, which will make this nebulae absolutely amazing. The next one is the Boogeyman Nebula. I love this one. I love the name of it. This is a gorgeous target in Orion right to the other side of Barnard's Loop from M78, which is also a really great target that I actually surprisingly don't see a lot of people shooting, saying it's just right there in Orion, but it is also a broadband target and quite dim. This one is quite dim too and very heavy in HA, so dual narrowband and HA filters will definitely help, but these, this is also like Lambda Orionis, where you're going to want to get an HA RGB combination because you're going to want both features. This can also be shot from various focal lengths, I mean from really zoomed in like I am here to really wide where you get this mixed with M78 in there in Barnard's loop. So the, the, a large, a large amount of focal lengths can shoot this anywhere from 135 all the way to 1500. You can get this target absolutely gorgeous and framed up just how you want it. And this is also going to require some dark skies probably in a good, good amount of integration time. M moving on to the snake nebula now, just absolutely gorgeous nebula here. This is one that I am going to highly, highly recommend. 
this is going to be better the more south you are, since this is situated in the Milky Way core. But it is definitely a target worth shooting. Probably going to need some dark skies and long exposures for this. But it will definitely be easier than a lot of dark nebulae, saying you get all these yellow star fields in the Milky Way core kind of around it. Which will definitely help. But this is just a gorgeous target. And you got a lot of other dusty areas around it, which are super, super cool. And so, you know, even if you're wide, you can get amazing, amazing results on this target. Or if you're super zoomed in like me, again, you can get amazing results on this target. So this is, I'm definitely going to recommend this. The next target is IC1284, which is also in the Milky Way core. This is another beautiful target, kind of with the dusty features in the yellow star uh, fields in the background. But this is a actually a reflection nebulae, which just looks beautiful. It's this red reflection nebulae with kind of these blue ones kind of hanging off into the side, with the, like this dusty mountain feature in the yellow star fields in the background, which is just amazing. You can get some amazing compositions and mosaics on this. It's just incredible if you're wide field. Again, you can shoot this. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And if you're super zoomed in like me, you could also shoot this. This is, again, going to require uh, uh, some more long integration and probably some dark skies. And I also want to mention that like this and the snake nebulae and things like that, these are best shot in broadband. There's not a lot of narrowband stuff going on. I mean, there is like a around these kind of mountain uh, regions. There's a lot of HA coming, coming out around here. If you have like a HA filter, uh, but I definitely don't recommend just shooting in a uh, narrow band or anything like this for these targets. For these targets, if you're going to do any HA, it's going to need to be an HA RGB composition because these are heavily, heavily broadband targets. All right, this one is M9, another Messier catalog one we got here. Not a messy object you see often. In fact, I recently actually realized just how cool this target is. It's a beautiful star cluster, uh, more of a globular cluster, so like not your like open star clusters or anything. Uh, right next to some beautiful dark nebulae with still the yellow star fields coming off the Milky Way core here, as you can see. But this is super cool. This is a definitely, I'd say, a bit more of a target that does kind of require some focal length because uh, there's not much other than just stars going on around it besides the dark nebulae you get right here. And they're all kind of tight squeezed together. And the next one is the Ghost of Cepheus, which is a gorgeous dark nebulae. This is right next to the Iris Nebula, which I just shot here recently and got a gorgeous image I'm super happy with. Uh, this is just right to the side of it and it is absolutely amazing. It has a lot of dusty features going on around it too. So wide field or zoomed in, this is going to be an amazing target. But the kind of Ghost of Cepheus Nebula itself is actually quite small. Uh, as you can see here, these are really tiny targets, but it definitely would be made up for if you were to shoot this wide from just all the stuff going on around it, which is absolutely incredible. Low Bortal is needed and long exposures, and like I said, for all these dusty targets, you really want to have a fast scope. Like F7 and stuff, you know, of course you can still get it, but I like F7, F6 is going to be a lot harder. You know, if you're at like F3, F4, it's going to be a lot easier to get a lot of this stuff. And if you're even F2 or F1.9 or something like that, these targets are going to be fantastic, especially if you're in dark skies. Caudwell 61 is another very interesting target. This is a spring target. Um, I actually recently shot this for the first time, and it's just a fantastic target. These are two super small galaxies, I want to point that out. This is definitely going to require focal length. Two super small galaxies that are colliding together and just making these just gorgeous tails off each of these galaxies just shooting way out, which are actually kind of dim. But like the galaxies right here in the corner of the galaxies themselves are actually quite bright. Uh, the details are super small too, so like I said, you're going to need that focal length, you're going to need that pixel scale of like, you know, one and a half arc second or less to be able to get a lot of good detail in this. Uh, so this is definitely more of a challenging target, but still possible, possible probably up to, you know, Bortle 6, 7-ish, but this is a broadband target. Although, if you were to do an HA RGB comp composition, I bet it would be really cool because there's probably some nice HA regions throughout these galaxies, which would be awesome. 
Alright everyone, that about wraps it up for today's video. I hope I inspired you to go give yourself a bit of a challenge and try to shoot some of these objects that I've given you and hopefully you get some nice successful images on them. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.